Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Chris, and this is my channel, Barnon 11970 And uh, we got some talking to do, and hopefully you'll be doing some listening. So thank you for taking the time to want to do that. All right. Now, if you're one of the people who've been watching my channel for a while, you've seen some progressions, you've seen some situations, good and bad. That's basically like anything in life. You're going to have your ups, your downs, your happy times, your sad times. It's part of life. I've always, especially as I've quote unquote progressed and got deeper into thoughts and learned what I've learned and learned the tricks and the puzzles, and it's not easy by any means, but it gets easier. I do understand that everything happens for a reason and it could turn into something good that you learn from yourself if you pay attention to what is being presented in front of you. And the best way to pay attention to something is when something is bad. Because for every good memory you can remind yourself of, I guarantee you, you can almost put yourself back into a traumatic situation you might have had in your life, almost like it just happened. So whether we like it or not, when bad things happen, it creates an impact. You pay attention to it. You know, if somebody was to try and tell you to get out of a chair that they were, that they were originally sitting in, they could be nice. And if you don't want to get up, you won't. But if, you know, and I don't want anybody to do this, but if somebody set the, the chair on fire, well, you're going to get up. So the pain in the bed creates a better reaction. Now, I'm not suggesting everybody do bad things, but what I'm saying is when bad things happen to you, if you take it as, all right, someone or something is trying to point something out in my life that I need to see, and I haven't gotten the clue to figure it out, and it gets progressively worse and worse. So take, for example, what I've been going through on this channel and my recent channel. Well, some of the things I've been dealing with is, like people know, some of the harassment. And I'm not here to mention any names or anything like that because it's just beyond that at this point. But there are people, for whatever intention, was to try and humiliate me, insult me, take things out of context, um, find one or two bad parts and just blow it out of proportion. And then you'll get the other people who basically are like 90% of the world they will believe everything that's presented to them without seeing both sides of the story and they will create an emotional response. Okay. So that's, we know that's happened. Now, for those of you who've been watching me for a while, know that I obviously needed to learn what this was about. And I think finally, after years of the same situations following me with negativity, and hurt and me kind of at one point, a lot of times I would kind of like crawl into a shell and feel bad or think, all right, maybe I should back off. You know, maybe I shouldn't say certain things. Maybe I should fall in line, kind of that, so to speak. And then um, I watched a comedian today and I won't say the comedian's name, but he kind of talks about stuff that most people are afraid to talk about. And he did it not in a way to hurt people, but in a way to basically say, in a world of overly sensitive, egotistical people where they feel like they have to matter all the time, placing themselves in other people's business, that he wasn't afraid to stand up and be who he was because that's your right to be able to speak your mind, to have your own beliefs, to love who you want to love, to like what you want to like, to believe in what you want to believe in. And there are some people, I mean, he, this, this comedian was talking about how at one point he was even getting death threats. And that kind of rang true to me because I've been there. I've gotten the late phone calls of people on this very channel who are still subscribed to me to this day who put out my personal information and would call my house. And the one thing he said is he wouldn't back down from it. And he said, if somebody killed him because of his belief of it making jokes, if somebody was going to kill him over a joke, then it was worth it for him. Now, that wasn't arrogance. I think it was kind of the principle, the thing of standing up for what you believe in. And I think in this society, we are too politically correct. We are too overly sensitive. We're too concerned about what other people do, that there are people that will take it 
upon their selves for whatever reason, whether they get paid to do it or they do it because they just enjoy the fact that they're hurting other people is I think we had just become too afraid. And even on, and I think this is what I love about the fact that after getting tired here, I, I, I went back to something I loved thinking, you know, I'll just pretend that stuff didn't affect me, move on to something that I used to love, bring that and everything will be wonderful. And eventually the very people that were here insulting and trying to hurt me found me over there. And the whole thing started over and they started putting out information that is just so overblown out of proportion and other people just, like I said, because they believe everything they hear, they just believed everything and I became the enemy number one in comic books. Which, if you think about it, I mean, I can understand people hating me here for some of the things because I talk about religion, politics, finances. I can see how that can understand, but but comic books, you know, really? But I, I think I learned something tonight, and I think we all need to learn this. And I've learned several little things over time, but this time I think it just, I'm like, wow, it put it in proper perspective that we are all, that we, the ones who care, the ones that are trying to make an impact, the ones that actually feel bad when an animal gets killed or doesn't like the way governments run and try and do things differently, or maybe like crystals because of, for whatever reason, makes them happy. And we've allowed other people to say, no, you can't do that because I don't understand it. I don't agree with it, or I don't like it. And in a world that is mainly predatory, because if you look at this planet, this planet is filled with beings that feed off of each other. The animal kingdom, bugs, killing each other, eating each other, consuming each other. It's just a vicious cycle. So how are we any different? Yes, we can speak, we can communicate in different ways. We have, we have a brain, but we don't really use all of it because we don't do it all for art and creation and love and progress. We use a lot of our brain to hurt, insult, kill, murder, control, enslave, and yet we allow it. Learning lesson I want to send out to everybody out there who's maybe been intimidated or hurt or scared or concerned or depressed or angry or whatever or lonely is it all boils down to your decision on if you will allow other people's energy to influence you. And that's one of the reasons why throughout the recorded history, at least the recorded history they tell us about. Because remember, the winner of the war is the one that can tell the story. And the more you study history, the more you learn that the things we, we've been told are not as truthful as they lead you to believe it is. And there are some that are just too afraid to ever dig deep enough to see below the surface. Because it ruins their comfortable lifestyle. Even though most people are miserable and depressed and poor, and starving, and hurting, and alone, and afraid. And how can I say that? Just turn on any news station, that's all you hear about, and all you see. Now, of course, there are plenty of people that will live comfortably, and live quite well, but they're not the majority. And there are plenty of people, let's put it this way, if there are people online whose sole purpose is to hurt other people because they have a different way of thinking, then there is something wrong with them that they may not even realize. Especially if you're getting paid for it. But it doesn't matter. So what I want anybody that hears this that cares and gives a damn is to stop being afraid. Stop worrying about the consequences of what other people put on you. If they want to hate, that's fine. But if you let their hate dictate stopping you from doing something, because your mood can affect somebody else's mood. So that means positively and negatively. And that could create a whole nother pattern of what somebody could have done in two different directions, good or bad. Because just imagine a person behind you, you're walking into a building and the person behind you is it's got a cup of coffee in their hand and, and you rudely don't open the door for them and let it fall. You know, the door slams in front of them and their coffee spills all over them. Now their day is ruined. What if that was a doctor getting ready to perform an operation and all he could think about is the rude person that was made him spill his coffee and burn him. 
You think he's going to work as well as he would have? Or on the other end of the spectrum, what if you were the one politely enough to hold the door open for that person and say, hi, have a nice day? Maybe they might think, wow, you know what? Maybe people do deserve a better chance. Maybe they had a really bad day and they were going to go into that operation saying, you know what? I don't care. I'm just doing my job. But maybe somebody did something nice for them that day and they said, you know what? Maybe people aren't that bad after all. So that's where the spiral happens. And some of these people that go to other people's YouTube channels for whatever you talk about, whether it's video games, whether it's politics, whether it's religion, whether it's whatever, talking about you love collecting spiders. For people to go and try and hurt others to make themselves feel better is the true form of weakness. That's why they hide. And that's why governments throughout history have always hidden behind their forces who they pay well enough to do their bidding and don't realize that they are protecting the very people who are enslaving them. And they call us the crazy ones, the stupid ones. Let's put it this way. If I'm considered stupid because I care, then I guess I'm stupid. I don't do everything correctly. I don't do everything 100% the right way. But what is the right way? Can somebody explain to me what is the right way? Because none of us are traveling it. Because does it look like this world is going in a good direction? Are our leaders leading us? Or are they just dragging us along? digging into our pockets so they can take from us what we create so they don't have to. And we get complacent. How many times do you hear throughout a day when somebody's being frisked or somebody's being spied on where they say, well, if you have nothing to hide, well, where does that end? Do you want to, every time you have to go into your car to go to work, you have to have a full body cavity search because you never know you might be hiding something. Or what about your husband or your wife? We got to film them when they're in the shower. Because if you have nothing to hide, we come, we become complacent for the latest new toy. I mean, everybody wants the new Apple phone, which has the battery that you can't remove. So they could spy on you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And I remember when I used to talk about that years ago, I used to get laughed at and ridiculed. And now that people found it to be true, why don't they care? And think about when it comes to protesting. Now, protesting falls under the category of drowning in good intention. Because I'm not saying people don't want to make change, because a lot do. But a lot of people don't want to put themselves on the line. And that's one thing I've done in the years. I may not get everything right. I may not say everything right. I may not do everything right. But I've stood here and faced multiple people that gang up on me because they need those power of the many to attack a single person like me. That's the bully mentality, even on the comic book channel. And I'm seeing it now when people are making brand new accounts and they just coincidentally that very day, even though they just happen to coincidentally just make a random channel, they just happen to find mine and have a problem with what I'm doing. Sure, it's just a coincidence, the five times that it happened today. But when they're all ganged together, they feel their power, and it takes all of them to try and confront one person. Sure makes them tough, doesn't it? Isn't that very familiar with governments throughout the world, throughout history? They've had to build their armies while the king stands on his throne, stepping on his fellow peasants, extracting everything because we allow them to, and have their bullies make them feel tough and brave and powerful. When I'm sure if you had them alone or the roles were reversed, don't think they'd be as arrogant anymore, would they? So I'm not saying we should reduce ourselves to their level and be evil and be rude and be hurtful because then we are no better than they are. And that was the lesson that I needed to learn is I got every time I was attacked for whatever reason, I got very defensive, very angry, and I wanted to, wanted to fight back. And it went against my wanting to care and help people, which would fuel their fire. But I I don't want to back down anymore. I'm not going to back down anymore. And neither should you. 
Because there is an old saying, whether you believe in the United States for whatever it is and whatever it could be and ever whatever it was, there's a saying that still can hold true if you make it that, and that's united we stand and divided we fall. And that doesn't have to just be this corporation known as the United States. So whether when you hear that, that sounds silly or crazy or scary or unfamiliar or the truth, it doesn't change what is underlying in the surface, and it doesn't give anyone the right to hurt somebody else for their belief. I don't dislike somebody because they worship a different God than I do, or have a different sexual preference than I do, or have a different colored skin than I do. I don't like somebody because they're evil. And that's why outside of YouTube, I get along with everybody. And when I DJed a party last night, well, not a party, I, I had to cover for a friend that works at a bar. And every now and then asked me, asked me last minute. I went there. I had the time of my life. I had such a fun time DJing for those people. And they appreciated it. They welcomed me back because it was my third time there and they remembered me. And they were like, oh, Chris, good to see you. It's a great time. And I realized that's the real world. Nobody is there trying to hurt me or wish hurt and ganging up on me because it's the fun, cool thing to do or getting paid to do it. But here, people can be whatever they want. And a lot of them are cowards. And it's true to life when it comes to the ruling class because who really rules? How can, just for Number's sake, how can one million people control six billion people? Think about that. It's because we allow them to. Like I've said before, when people actually learn what the amendment is about, the 13th Amendment, at least their law, because all laws are based on acts and codes – which they're telling you everything's an act and it's all done in code. So I tell people the messages are always hidden. And if you don't understand them, there is no ignorance. There is no excuse for ignorance of the law. Ignorance of the law is no excuse. So what it boils down to is, are you a good person or are you a hurtful person? And that can switch from time to time. Because I'm not saying if you're good, you're always going to be an angel and you're always going to be good. And I'm not saying if you're bad, you're, you're not always bad. Because I, I can guarantee some of the people that try and hurt me, I'm sure they have family. I'm sure they have pets. I'm sure they have kids. I'm sure they love them. Remember, whether you, whatever you want to think about Hitler, from what they teach the main people, that's why I'm saying it that way, because then people can understand it better. Even Hitler had a dog. So there's always going to be bad and good people and good and bad people, but it's the majority of what you do. And one of the things I get attacked for is, like, for example, and I totally forgot about this. On my comic book channel, I had a donation button up. Now, they're accusing me the whole time in which I was there, which is ridiculous because if you have a YouTube channel, go on your channel page and you could see there is a button for it that does not activate until they decide a certain time has gone by. And you have enough people to where you can even turn it on. So, you know, that's small fries. And people were making me feel bad that I think maybe two or three times out of 400 videos, I mentioned it. And then I thought about it. And I thought about it tonight. Even if I had that donation button, even if I asked a donation every single day, who is it for them to say I can't do it or why I should be doing it? or for whatever reasons, whose business is theirs to police what I choose to do? And not for nothing, if I asked for a donation, I'm not telling, I'm not demanding. I've never said, well, if people don't donate, you can't watch a video. Isn't that what donations are all about? Do they call Jerry's kids, and every time they do a pledge for fixing a illness that will never be cured because there are no cures, at least when it comes to the medical field. That's why they always treat and not cure because you can't get repeat business if you cure them, can you? 
And people don't like to hear this stuff. It rocks the boat. And instead of them actually researching the stuff, which takes effort, it's a lot easier to gang up on other people and hurt them and insult them and make fun of them. And the trolls that are on all over YouTube, and I'm not just saying me, the trolls, they're smart. They know how to get you. They don't talk about the facts. Well, at least not the way they're presented. They don't talk to you like civil human beings. They attack you personally. Like I've had a person make a comment about sun gazing, about my weight. I've had people ask about my hair. Like that has anything to do with the things I talk about. But it's easy to laugh at somebody, but we allow it. So what I'm telling those who have, if you're listening to this point, you're one of the people that care or you're just absolutely bored. But the point is, we will never take back anything if we don't stand up for it. Because like I was saying a little bit earlier, and you guys know me if you've been watching for a while, I can get sidetracked sometimes. When it comes to protesting, businesses, governments love when you protest. And I was talking about, <coughs> excuse me, drowning in good intention. Your intention by protesting is doing something good. But are you really? I'll give you a prime example. Let's say you are working, you are, you have a phone system. Well, you have a phone and you're paying the phone bill to, let's just say, Starlight Industry. Okay. Made up phone company. The Starlight Enterprises. You don't normally pay $50 a month for your phone bill. And then all of a sudden, it goes from $50 to $200. And you love this. You have your number. You've had them for a decade. And you're mad about it. But you're still paying the bill. And you say, you know what? I'm going to protest. I'm going to go put up a sign. I'm going to stand in front of their building. I'm going to take 50, 100, 10,000 of my friends. And we're all going to go march in front of the, the building. And every one of them is mad. But they're still buying it. They're still paying their bill. So what are you doing? When you're doing that marching in front of that corporate office, what also is going to be there besides the protesters? Well, you're going to have media. So you're giving them free publicity. Do you think the owner of the Starlight Industries phone company gives a damn that you're marching outside and sleeping outside in the cold and the rain for days, weeks, months at a time? If you're still paying the very bill you're complaining about and you're giving them free advertisement on top of it, the way to change them is to stop playing, stop paying. And then they have to send a clear message that says either we go out of business because no one's giving us money or we change and lower our prices again to make people happy. And the problem is if you look throughout history, when it comes to revolutions and things, it usually happens when there is nothing left for them to steal from you, and then you have no choice. When are people going to wake up and stop waiting for that to happen? And I've talked about the whole gold and silver thing for years, and people say, oh, look at the prices. It's gone down. It sure has, but if it ever, if there is a economic problem, it's not going to stay down, and it's going to go up real quick. And the, the very things that you're, the very greenbacks you're holding in your pocket, well, good luck trying to use those. That's like saying I have the most monopoly money. Now, of course, I can't guarantee that's going to happen. But if you look throughout history, it's happened before and happened many times. And what are we doing that's different? Are we being fiscally responsible, especially when we're borrowing money from a corporation owned by stockholders in the very banks that we bailed out? part of a, not part of the United States, backed by nothing, printing it until there's no end because they trick you into believing that they print all the money they need when in truth, they only print the principal. Now, if you've ever borrowed money in your lifetime, you know that when you borrow $10,000, you don't pay back $10,000. Well, you do, but you just add the interest on top. So let's put the money system in, in perspective. If there is $1 in the world, 
they only created one dollar and you borrow it first of all if you borrow money it's because you probably need it to use it for something so you're not going to borrow the one dollar which is the only dollar in existence and say oh, okay i have it you're just going to keep it well let's say you, you did that you just decided you know what i want to have the only dollar that's in the world i want it so i'm going to borrow it because they're not going to give it to you and if you steal it they're going to come get you so let's just say you did the right thing well guess what you have to pay back a dollar ten how do you do that when only a dollar was created well they have to create more money so let's say they make okay we'll make two dollars all right so i only need a dollar ten but you're saying i can only take out two dollars all right so i'll borrow two dollars now you have to pay interest on that and you see how it will get higher and higher and higher? Well, congratulations. You now understand the debt ceiling and the fiscal cliff. They both sound scary because the ignorant people who are too busy looking at their cell phones, who are the real zombies, will never get. But they're sure good at laughing at people if they're losing their hair or maybe have a little weight or they say something wrong. The idea is not to be afraid anymore. So I hope one person... And that's what I care about. I have 17, over 17,000 subscribers on this channel. And if one person gets it and they change their mindset and they lose their fear and they do something maybe they never thought they could because of this motivated them, what if that one person is the first person that creates something that changes the world? Do you think I would give a damn about the people that tried to stop me? Because let's say I had a crystal ball. And I decided today, instead of going this route, I decided to get all depressed. I decided to say, you know what? I give up. I'm going to give in. I'm going to be politically correct. And what if that person never got that speech? And it doesn't have to come from me. So I'm not going to sit here and say my ego is so big that I think I'm the one that's going to change the world by helping somebody else. It could be somebody that heard me, that heard somebody else, that heard three other people, that said something that totally woke up 10 other people, that finally got one other person down the street to end up saying, hello, time to make the change for the world, time to lead us into a better world. Instead of repeatedly doing the same thing over and over again, because they tell you in front of your face that, how many times have you heard in your lifetime, if you don't repeat history, you're doomed to repeat it, and yet they will only program you a certain way, and you will never research it and question it? When is enough enough? We create. They destroy. It takes effort. It takes talent. It takes time. It takes love. It takes dedication. It takes heart to create. It only takes a physical presence, or not even that, a person typing on a computer to destroy. Which one are you going to be more proud of? Because I'm sure when I make my next video on my comic book channel, because again, I do it now for the few that appreciate what I do. I've got many people thanking me for helping them. Despite what some of the people are doing now. And they're going to high five each other when they gang up. And they, they want a community. Yeah, they're really showing it. But until we change the world ourselves, nothing's going to change. So if people want to have a legacy and high five each other over the fact that they ganged up on a person and tried to hurt them to save the world from comic books, really, or save the world from here because I talk about sun gazing or I talk about different things about religion. I mean, you ever see men are from, um, men are from Mars, women are from Venus? Well, here's the symbol for Mars. Here's the symbol for Venus. See, look here. Look up there. See where the Mars? Venus. Hmm. Ever see those signs on the bathroom wall? On the bathroom door? Male, female. Men are from Mars. Women are from Venus. Venus. Sure, it's just a coincidence. Oh, and by the way, to the very religious people, if you look at the ancient history of God, that is the symbol. Go look at an old religious scripture, and you will see that letter H. For, for the symbol of God. Well, guess what? It's also the symbol for Saturn. And how many people have talked about how the black pope, and I'm not talking color black. If you don't know who the black pope is, you better start researching. But how they worship Satan, Saturn, the ring, the halo around the head. Hmm, what a coincidence that the very same symbol that is the symbol for God 
and you can look it up, don't call me crazy, look it up, is also the symbol for Satan, for Saturn. Is that different from what you've been told? It sure is. Is it probably the first time you've ever seen something like that? It sure is. I mean, look at the days of the week. The seven days of the week are based on the seven visible planets. Sun for the sun, Monday for the, uh, Sunday for sun, mo Monday for the moon, Saturday for Saturn, and the others, look them up in Spanish. Wednesday is um, Miércoles, Mercury. Uh, Friday is Venus, I believe. Venus. Look them all up, you'll see. But you're not told these things. And no one asks why. Everything is a choice. Whether you do or don't do. Fear is also a choice. That's why a very smart person at one time said there is nothing to fear but fear itself. When are we going to stop being afraid of the man behind the curtain? And I'm sure I will get attacked for this. I'm sure I'll get the thumbs down. I'm sure there will be people that feel the need to want to scare me. But like that comedian said, if, if I have to go because I stood my ground and I stood for something and somebody's going to murder me for that belief, then I win. And the day we all have that feeling is the day we all are united and all will stand. Or you can just keep watching your Justin Bieber videos, caring about what the Kardashians are doing, cheering on that sports team. And I'm sorry, military people, you don't know who you're a military for. You're a military for the British Army. If you are in the United States Army, you are part of a corporation that's located in the District of Columbia, which was sold to the British Crown in 1871. And in 1933, this country went completely bankrupt. And the only thing that this country had for collateral is its citizens, its people. And if you ever knew what the word citizen meant, and if you look at some of my videos, it will teach you because there's a difference between regular language and law. But again, everything is all what you want it to be. So you could keep covering your ears, covering your eyes. Covering your mouth, hear no evil, see no evil, think no evil, speak no evil. Ever wonder why they always draw three monkeys? We're the Walking Dead. You ever watch the TV show Walking Dead? It's a very profound message that Rick Grimes said in season five towards the end when he's sitting in that bar, the barn. We are the Walking Dead. If only he knew what he was really saying, what he was being told to say. Well, we don't have to be. We choose to be because the people that are in control dangle a couple of carrots in front of us and some people get more carrots than others to look the other way or contribute to the pain and the murder of innocent people throughout the world because they have something that somebody else wants and some people are willing. Most people are not willing to kill for it, but they're willing to get other people to do it for them. So what's my point? My point is I've learned that I don't want to be scared anymore. I don't want to be afraid. I don't want to be intimidated. I don't want to be afraid to say something for fear of being judged, attacked, ridiculed. Let them make their assumptions. Let them spread their lies. Let them gang up on each other because they need the others to be powerful when I can do this on my own. Because I remember times when I tried to talk to these people rationally. They can't do it one-on-one. -on -one. Because one of the very trolls, and I won't even mention his name, when I used to talk to him, when I used to do a video chat with three other people, he actually was my, I considered a friend. I can't say a friend. But when we talked one-on-one, -on -one, we talked like regular human beings. To this day, I'm sure he still trolls me. Okay. That's what you do with your free time. There are people that I know that still troll me. They've been trolling me for five years plus. That's the legacy. You, they must be paying you pretty well. And you could deny it all you want. No rational human being, considering I don't go to your channel and I could give two rats asses about you. 
that for five years you would continually not only insult me here with the purpose of trying to get me off, which is the ironic part of how stupid some of these people are, is that I actually at one point was getting so fed up at this. That's why I went to the comic book channels. If you would have just shut your mouths, I would have continued to just do that. But you know what? You went out of your way to find me there and try and attack me. Well, guess what? Now I'm back here. They're so stupid. And we got to stop being afraid. The chips will fall where they may. And you know what? But one of the things that the comedian said that inspired me and motivated me is, you know what? We all die. And we all move on to a different place. Whatever you want to believe, whatever makes you sleep better at night, go ahead and believe that. But you know what? So at least as far as I know, we don't last forever in the particular bodies that we are given. We are light beings and light can never be extinguished. So we always go somewhere. I view us like being in a submarine. We're here visiting the undersea world and we need a submarine to keep us from exploding. But if that submarine ever breaks, you just get out and get a new one. Unless you just don't want to go back and see what's underwater anymore. So this is a long video. I like doing these. Some people like it. Many will not. But I don't do this for the many who don't care. I don't do it for the, the few that want to hurt me for it. I do it for the ones that are here listening right now because they are listening because they love what they're hearing. It helps them feel better. It maybe pushes them in a different direction or helps guide them is probably a better word. Those are the people I do this for. And I don't need millions of people. So the people that say they think I have an attitude or an ego or whatever, maybe they should look at themselves because they're so busy worrying about me that they forget about themselves. And that's why they need numerous people to be on their side to get the support because they wouldn't be able to do it by themselves. And of course, there's exceptions to every rule. I'll give credit to some of the trolls that at least did it by themselves and showed their faces. One of them, I won't say their name, but he lives upstate New York. Always gave him credit because he showed his face, did it by himself. At least he's a real man in that aspect. Still has anger issues, still won't stop, but I give him respect for that. But the ones that have to gang up and have 50, 60, 100, 500 people on their side to make them powerful, those are the weak ones. And that's what governments throughout history have been. Weak, frayed people that needed to use others and pay off others and scare others to get everything they wanted because otherwise they couldn't do it on their own. And we allow them to. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Well, you know what? You know why this world is fucked up? Because we allow it. So you know what? Shame on us. Shame on you. And shame on me. I can't do everything, but I can do my strength, which is speaking. And if I can get the one person that out there can motivate the world, and I knew I had a part to that inspiration, then hell yeah, I don't give a damn about what the majority think. One person can change the world. Is it you? Thanks for watching.